When you open up your site to the public, you invite enormous collaboration, but also enormous trouble. The same things that let people contribute content also make it easy for them to cause problems. We talked a little bit about that in the videos on setting comment policy and managing comments. Now we'll go into what happens when someone goes from being an anonymous visitor to a site member and how you can control it. To start with, I want to explain that Drupal comes with four levels of permission built in. You can see that by clicking People and then the Permissions tab. Here we see three different levels. There's the anonymous user, that's anybody who visits your site and isn't logged in. Authenticated user, that's somebody who has already signed in and that means they first have to get an account. The third level is the administrator role, which I'll come back to in just a minute. There's a fourth level here which isn't showing called the super user. That's the first user that was created when you set up your Drupal site and who has access to absolutely everything on the site. It's not shown here because you can't add or remove permissions from that person. I'll go more deeply into this system of roles and permissions in the videos about defining user roles and controlling access permissions. The important things to know now is that people who aren't signed in are the anonymous user, and people who are are authenticated users, and that you can control what each group does. So how does one go from being anonymous to authenticated? You control that in the account settings, which you find under configuration and account settings. I'll walk through this entire screen. The first thing is what you're going to call anonymous users, and by default, that's anonymous. There's one site out there, slashdot.org, which calls them anonymous cowards, which is one way of getting people to sign up for the site. You can call them whatever you want. To explain some of the rest of the settings, I'm going to open up my own user account here by control clicking on Hello Admin. That shows my user page here. Then I'll also click Edit. Now going back to our settings, we have enabled a personal contact form by default for new users. When you go to my profile, and I'll click again on View, you see this tab here that says Contact. Anybody who has the permissions to reach this and clicks Contact can then send me an email message. It's very similar to the contact form that you saw earlier, but it's set up for individual users. Now if I go back up and edit my account, you see that I have a checkbox down here where I can either allow or disallow that personal contact form. Going back to our account settings, we have this administrator role. That's the one that I was talking about a minute ago when you saw those three columns of permissions. The administrator role is automatically assigned new permissions whenever a module is enabled, as it says here. Really, I've never changed it from the administrator role, but some people like to have many more roles than that, and they might change the name. So if they do that, they can change it to whatever role they set up. When you start out, though, you only have a choice of having the administrator role be the one administrator or turned off entirely. Incidentally, when you set up a new content type, the administrator does not automatically get permission to add or change nodes of that content type. It's only for when you install modules. As we scroll down, we get to the most important part of this screen, who can register accounts. I'll go through all three of these in the video on creating user accounts, but essentially you have three options. The one that's there by default is that visitors can create accounts, but they can't actually start doing anything on the site as authenticated users until you approve them. That's not a bad setting to keep, at least at first, because it lets you grow your site but still have control. The second option here, visitors, lets anybody set up an account and they immediately become members of the site. It's a little dangerous, but it does encourage site growth. And if you go on the internet, you'll find that most sites are set up so visitors can set up their own accounts. Finally, we have the option administrators only, which as you would guess, takes away the option from visitors to set up their own account. The way this shows up to anonymous users, by the way, is if you leave your site in its default configuration, there's a link over in the left column that says, create an account. But that only shows up if visitors or this last option are selected. If you have administrators only, then it doesn't show up at all. Going down a little bit further, you can require email verification when a visitor creates an account. And what that does is it checks to make sure that the email address that they entered really does exist. It sends a message to that address with a secret key. They have to click on a link to go back to your site. And if the key isn't right, they don't become a member. And if they don't click that link within a certain period of time, I think it's 24 hours, they don't become a member. Finally, you can decide what happens when you cancel a user account. And 
you can go through those options there. They have to do with whether or not the account itself gets deleted or merely disabled, and what happens to the content that that person created. Going further down this screen, you can allow people to upload user pictures, what are sometimes called avatars, and have signatures which appear at the end of comments. All of these settings here have to do with the pictures, and if I uncheck that, you see, they simply disappear. At the very bottom of the page, we have a set of email messages. You can customize the messages that people get at various times as members. There is, of course, the new user created by an administrator, when they try to create an account, and their account is activated, and so on. Some of these you can choose whether or not the email goes out, like right here under Account Activation, Notify User When Account Is Activated. In each of these messages, you have what are called tokens, so you don't have to type in an explicit message that says, oh, well, what's this person's name? You can just put in this token that says username, and it gets filled in with the proper information. Details on all these variables are at the top of the screen here. Finally, we click Save Configuration, and we've set our policy. You might have noticed these two tabs at the top, Manage Fields and Manage Display. These are very similar to setting up fields in nodes, that is through content types, but they have to do with user profiles, and we'll talk about that more in the video about user profiles. There's one other thing I recommend you change when you start accepting members to your site, and that's to turn on tracking. You do that by going to Modules, and scrolling down until you get to the Tracker module. Turn that on, and click Save Configuration. What that does is it adds a tab to user profiles that lets everybody see what they've been doing on the site to a certain extent. And if I go back to my own profile here, and I'll go to View, we now see that tab, Track. And as I said, it shows where I've been. The one problem with the tracker is that there aren't separate permissions to access it. Anyone who can view profiles can see what other users have been doing. And you can see that by going to People, and permissions, and then scrolling all the way down to the user section at the bottom. View user profiles. By default, however, only administrators can see it. That takes you through most of the account settings. The next step we're going to do is to actually walk through those three sign-up scenarios that I showed you before to learn how they work. Whether you allow visitors to sign themselves up or require administrative intervention depends on the sort of site you're running. If you want to encourage public participation, that is, with creating nodes and comments and so on, then by all means use the one that doesn't require any administrator participation. If you do that, however, be sure that you have a plan in place to prevent abuse. And you can learn some of that through the video about managing comments.